That's how it worked right now, last month. That's how it's working before we publish the white paper, before we come off Ethereum onto our own blockchain, before we have press announcements, before we have educational websites and videos that show people how to do it easily, before Switch is live, it's already working. Because, because we have made it easy for anybody in the world to mine a basically green Bitcoin, right? Something that works just like Bitcoin, but that is green. Good evening, everybody. Thanks, thanks so much for taking your time and, and being with us uh, tonight, this afternoon, or um, in the time zone that you're calling it from. Obviously, it's morning here uh, for us. And um, I'm going to walk you through just like a really simple, uh, a really simple presentation. Uh, we'll, we'll be updating it and publishing it here in the next couple of weeks. Um, today is officially 30 days for me so that I've been on board uh, full time for 30 days. Uh, and um, the, the first and most important thing for us to do was get our development team on track. And so uh, during my due diligence, I was looking at a lot of the code and, and looking at um, a lot of the opportunities in the code and a lot of the challenges in the code, right? And when you're in software development, you're never done developing software, right? When you're developing software, it, it, you never have a finished product. You are always making improvements to that product. And so all of your favorite apps and my favorite apps in the app store, we can go and, and we can look at them and there's always a new version, right? There's always going to be a new version um, of uh, software for my iPhone. There's always going to be a new version of software for my computers and, uh, and there's always going to be updates. So when I say that, you know, we're developing code, um, there's no end date, right? We're just going to keep making it better and better and better. But the, the first task was really um, to organize um, what is, um, you know, I walked everybody around yesterday. I'm going to do it again really fast. So, um, so uh, just as we get started, so uh, not everybody's in because we're getting in in the morning, but um, this is our office space. And it's a, uh, it's uh, 50,000 square feet in Lehigh, Utah. Uh, it's the capital of software right now in the world. Uh, Lehigh, Utah minted um, more billion dollar software companies last year than Silicon Valley. It's the first time that's ever happened uh, in 18 years. And so where we're working is uh, the software capital and specifically the finance software capital of fintech. Uh, it's the software capital of the world right now. Uh, money, investors, uh, companies are pouring in here. Uh, and we are right in the middle of um, silicone slopes, um, right in the heart of it, uh, literally in our parking lot. Um, uh, companies come and get together. There was a NFT lunch the other day with like sixty different companies that were all coming and presenting their NFTs. So this is the this is the building that we're in. It's still early, so I got my early birds in here. About 20, 30 percent of the teams in here um, already grinding. Uh, this will be humming in about one hour uh, with 115 to 150 people um, that are all working on blockchain projects and, um, and they're all working on uh, the software. And so our first job was getting them in and um, organizing those development teams in a way where we can actually have a working product um, by July 4th uh, that we can all be proud to represent. And that working product um, that working product is that people can use green to pay their power bill. All right. And so we'll talk about that in a second, why that's so important, but, um, I'm going to, I'm going to walk you through, uh, a couple of slides, um, that are really simple. And then I'm just going to write some notes. I'm, I'm, uh, because of the, some of the language barriers and challenges. So I'll, I'll, I'll be sharing my screen uh, so that we can look at the words together as I go through it. And we'll just sort of type them out. Um, and that will be easier for some of us to keep up with when we're hearing my words and then seeing the words. And I think it'll be easier to understand. So let me share my screen. All right, so um, obviously we live in a really exciting time where, um, where things are being disrupted. 
right? Industries are being changed forever, not just with blockchain technologies, but the way we're thinking about business is totally different. Um, where Uber and Netflix um, are some of the biggest media companies in the world, they produce very little of their own content. Um, uh, Uber is the largest transportation company in the world, but they don't own any vehicles. Um, Airbnb is the largest uh, hotel provider. They're worth more than all the Marriott's and Hilton's combined, uh, but they don't own any businesses. And so there's a different way that we've been thinking about commerce and, uh, and, and, and companies in value for about 10 years right now. And blockchain's paying um, uh, a really big part in that. Uh, converting things to data is really what set the phase of technology that we're in um, wild. I graduated uh, from the university in 1998 uh, into what is being called now like the, the first dot-com boom. They're calling this right now the second big boom in dot-coms or technology right now. And it's not being launched from Silicon Valley. It's actually being launched from where I'm sitting right now, uh, this place called Silicon Slopes, with international investors and companies from all over the world um, working right here in Utah. And the idea here is that by converting traditional things, elements, right? This piece of paper is an element, right? It, it, it is made up of molecules, um, wood, uh, water, glue, and, uh, and we have figured out how to virtually transport it to the other side of the world instantly um, by leveraging data, right? So we turn the picture or the image or the words um, on this piece of paper into data, that data can be transmitted through a multiverse of conduit, satellite, cell phones, cable companies, telephone lines, other lines, and it can be transmitted to anywhere in the world and then reassembled on a piece of paper. Now, this seems really simple, but, um, but what it allowed for is for me to virtually transport this piece of paper in real time anywhere in the world. And now, of course, like the evolution of this is DocuSign, and we do this um, on a digital image. Well, I'm 45 years old. And uh, when I graduated the university, I sold long distance service and I sold long distance services all over the world. Um, the average phone bill was a hundred to $200 every single month. And people had long distance charges um, back before even we had cell phone services. I had a sales team, just like the sales team that is visiting me uh, that I'm visiting with this morning right now. And we sold, we sold long distance service in Sweden, and we sold long distance service in Australia, and we sold long distance service in Germany. Um, and I was making a residual percentage on, um, on hundreds of millions of dollars of uh, long distance services uh, every single um, year. And then my income disappeared because long distance charges disappeared. Right? Why did long distance charges disappear? Well, we used to have a voice and our voice had to travel on an actual wire. And so to actually call from New York to London, that sound wave had to actually travel under the ocean on a wire. And then once it met um, London, it could move around uh, on other wires. But it was trapped. And with only being able to go on one kind of wire, it was slow and expensive to distribute. The idea of transforming sound into ones and zeros or data let us use a multitude of networks. This was happening in 2000 and cable companies were distributing audio and video to homes all over the world with a cable wire. It was a totally different wire, but now data can travel on, not just on a phone wire, but it could travel on a cable wire and it could travel on an analog cellular wire and a cellular wire, and it could travel on a satellite network. And so now what happens is we had multiple ways, a metaverse of ways to distribute sound. And that's what made it free. And today, really people say, well, the cost of internet went up. 
No, not really. We were paying um, $10 or $20 a month for 56K modem. And now we pay $70 a month for 10 megabits up and down. So actually the cost of data has come down exponentially as well. And now our sound and audio and video is free um, through data. Well, this needs to happen one more time. This needs to happen one more time. Think about, think about how being able to use our cell phones and talk with each other for free on Wi-Fi. Think about how that's changing the world right now. Not just through Netflix and Hulu, right? Egypt used Twitter to start a revolution. They did. They had no formal way of communicating. And they used Twitter, which was data, for free, right? They didn't have, like the, the revolutionists, they didn't have an expensive satellite uh, um, confidential phones and walkie-talkies, right? They, they communicated for free on Twitter, right? This is the power of what the data revolution is doing. It needs to happen uh, one more time. So what's next? Power. It's 100 years old. It's trapped on a wire. It's expensive to move around the world. And the men and women, the companies that have built these wires, they control everything. Um, it only costs one cent or less per kilowatt hour to create power. Right now, today, right now, today, um, solar power is the cheapest form of power in the world. So the, the, the unit economics of mining or harvesting coal or natural gas, a limited resource, the more you collect it, the more expensive it becomes to collect because the less of it there is. So Russia is the largest exporter for natural gas in the world. And they have invaded Ukraine unprovoked who's the second largest exporter of natural gas in the world. And uh, because of this, the electricity bills in the United Kingdom have doubled because the United Kingdom is heavily reliant on natural gas. And the uh, cost of energy around the world has gone up because two countries are at war who rely on natural gas. This is unnecessary today. The manufacturing, the unit economics of manufacturing state very simply that the more you manufacture something, the lower its cost. And four years ago, solar became the cheapest form of electricity in the world. It's cheaper than natural gas. So as the world understands this, no one needs to cross a border aggressively anymore in order to create the resource of energy that we all need. No one needs to do that anymore because through manufacturing, we can all make solar panels and we can use those solar panels to create energy. And when we can just create solar panels anywhere we want, we are not limited now by wires. We don't have to be limited anymore by wires. The average cost of power around the world is uh, 17 to 30 cents per kilowatt, and yet it only costs through solar panels less than one penny. Think about that markup. That means if an apple costs a dollar, it would sell it for $17 to $30, right? If a drink, if a soda costs a dollar, they would sell it for $17 to $30. That's too much. That's greed, especially with something that everybody is so reliant on. We need electricity. Everybody needs electricity. Electricity produces running water, right? Electricity connects us um, with people, right? It powers everything that we need that's comfortable. And, um, and it doesn't need to be this expensive to distribute 
and you don't need wires to distribute it at all anymore. What's happening is um, the technology exists and today, in fact, it already happens. So Bitcoin, the process of mining Bitcoin literally is the process of turning the element. Remember the element of paper? We are turning the element of electricity into data. So we are changing the molecular structure of something and literally creating a brand new product. The brand new product can move faster and cheaper all over the world. So by turning electricity into cryptocurrency or data, we can then send that cryptocurrency with a text message. By texting Bitcoin or texting green coin to somebody else in the world, I'm texting them electricity, just like a fax machine. And they can use that green and convert it back into power by using it to pay their power bill. And, um, and this is what we're going to launch on July 4th. Now, um, it's very hard to use a crypto wallet to pay for something today. Right. And so we have been working for almost um, two years with uh, Kathy, um, the creator and co founder of Discover Credit Card, to set up a new wallet system, a new bank that's easier for people to use their crypto, not just easier to use green, but also to make it easier for people to use Bitcoin because Bitcoin's hard to use. Right? I have to go into my Coinbase wallet or my Binance wallet. And if the company that I want to um, spend my money with doesn't accept Bitcoin, I can't give them the Bitcoin. Um, what the Switch credit card will do is it will store your Bitcoin and your green coin on a credit card like a debit card. And when you go to use it at a grocery store, or in this case, in paying your power bill, it will do the conversion. So it will convert Bitcoin to EU, right? It will call, convert Bitcoin to AU for my family in Australia. For my friends in the United States, it will convert Bitcoin to USD. And so by switching the currency uh, back and forth, it makes it appear to the vendor, to the company that you're trying to pay money to. It makes it appear as if they're just, you're just paying in fiat. So overnight, every but more people can accept cryptocurrency through the exchange of a bank. Now it's taken us two years to do this and we're launching the Switch credit card at the same time as we are launching uh, the power pay option. And we're gonna incentivize people to use the green coin to pay their power bill. So, um, so why are we doing this? Right. Um, why, 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 why is this, uh, uh, why is this important to be done? Well, um, it really, uh, it really comes back, um, to, uh, to Bitcoin. So, um, let me, let me do this here. Okay. So I, I think this is going to be good, um, uh, based on the, what you, um, Stefan said, there was a lot of people that, um, English is not the first language. So I thought I just, um, we'll start putting this together so that this is easier to understand. So um, it's really all about Bitcoin because people want to use Bitcoin, but Bitcoin uses too much electricity and is too slow, right? So really what the world wants is the world wants a better version of Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin is um, the conversion of electricity to data. That's what it is. In 2019, I started mining Bitcoin and for every hundred Bitcoin that I mined, my power bill was 85 to 90 Bitcoin, right? So the most of the cost of mining was electricity. Well, so let's look at what happens when we get exposure to Bitcoin, exposure to green. When I buy Bitcoin, I learn how to use a wallet and I learned that that wallet is hard to buy things with. It's not easy to use the wallet. Um, I also learned that I just bought something that goes up and down. So if I trade it, that's great because the more something goes up and down, the better it is to trade. But if I don't trade it, it's just scary. 
right? It's just going up and down and it's scary. And a lot of people are scared of Bitcoin. But when I mine Bitcoin, when I mine it, I learn why Bitcoin is valuable. I learn about the transactions. I learn about the ledger. I learn about the voting. I learn about consensus. I learn about trust. Do you know that you can transfer Bitcoin to a hard wallet and you can remove that hard wallet from the internet and you can drop that hard wallet to the bottom of the ocean? And because Bitcoin keeps track of every single transaction that's ever made, 10 years from now, with a hard drive at the bottom of the ocean, I can transfer my Bitcoin from the bottom of the ocean to my Coinbase account and I can sell it in 20 minutes. And I can do that with $100 million. I could do it with $10 billion. You can't move gold around that fast. You can't move um, uh, silver around that fast. You can't move uh, cash around that fast. And you can't protect it like that. Um, even though the device is not connected to the internet, even though it's dead, the Bitcoin ledger keeps track of every transaction and can see that the Bitcoin was transferred into that wallet and it was never moved for 10 years. And so it can just burn it at that location and recreate it in my Coinbase. So people want those same functions, but just um, using less electricity. Why do people mine Bitcoin? Well, there are rewards. What are the rewards? Well, every 20 minutes um, you compete for Bitcoin. You also get transaction fees. This is really important. This is the future. When all the Bitcoin starts running out, people are going to be collecting transaction fees and you get to vote. Voting is really important because you get to protect the money that you invested in mining Bitcoin. In 2017, there was a vote and people did not agree on what to do. Half of the people wanted to upgrade the code one way. The other half wanted to upgrade it another way and they voted and they didn't agree. And so at a particular block, they forked it into Bitcoin Cash. And for one hour, Bitcoin Cash was the same price as Bitcoin, $3,000. Today, Bitcoin is $40,000 and Bitcoin Cash is $350. Voting is really important. If you are investing a lot of time and money in something, you want to have a vote in what happens to what you're investing in. But here's the thing. When Bitcoin started off, it used to be near free. Um, you would buy hardware, which was a computer that you already own. You would plug it into your home or apartment and the power bill was very, very small. You would pay for the air conditioning. You would pay for the rent and the node license was free. So it was very, it had almost no cost um, no cost to be involved. Um, what about today? Now the hardware is really expensive. You need hundreds, hundreds of millions of dollars to get started in mining Bitcoin. And then your power bill is, you know, 70 to uh, 90% of what you spend is then your power bill. It's very hard for someone to uh, to mine Bitcoin today, you need lots and lots of money and lots of hardware. Here's what's really interesting about technology. And Stefan, this is something I've been talking about with our leaders for last few is if you look at technology, the value always moves from hardware to software. So when personal computers came out, right, the value, everybody thought the value was in Apple, the computer or IBM, the computer or Dell, the computer. Everybody thought that was going to be the value. And Microsoft wasn't worth anything and Salesforce wasn't even around. But the value has moved from the hardware to the software. In fact, this, the value has now moved from software to cloudware where we don't even need software. It's just a service. So while I buy, buy my phone for five, $600, I pay $50 a month for data storage. I pay $50 a month for the software service to connect all my devices so that I have everything on the devices. The value becomes software. And today, um, mining green.
It's software. Okay? Where we're taking it back just like Bitcoin used to be. The hardware, it's your computer. The power, it's home. It's $5 a month, right? The software is so efficient, you can now use your home computer again to mine, right? The value now has moved from the hardware back to the software because green is software that makes mining cryptocurrency really efficient and really easy for anybody. So, so you don't have to, uh, you don't have to pay rent and uh, pay a big air conditioning bill, right? And have, have a big location. You can just do it in your home. So we're basically, we're basically going back and taking the best version of Bitcoin where everybody can do it. Do you know that green has more active nodes than Ethereum? Here's why. It costs so much money to have an active Ethereum node today. It costs $3 million to stake Ethereum. Ethereum used to have more nodes. Bitcoin used to have more nodes because everybody could download the node for free and run it on their computer. But now, and so it was decentralized. Now people are, are building giant Bitcoin mining farms in data centers that are as big as Amazon Web Services. And it's centralizing. So it's moving from becoming something that everybody can use uh, to something that only wealthy people can do and something that you can do from your home to something that you can only do with a giant data center. Green is fixing that. Green is making it so that anybody can mine cryptocurrency from their home in a way that's valuable. So how did it work in April of 2022? You can buy a smart node. And let's spread this out. Okay, you buy a smart note for $5,620 that in April mined about 650 coins per day. Um, on Uniswap, okay, uh, green coin was selling for a penny. And so we can convert about $5 of power into $200 of currency or data. That's how it worked right now, last month. That's how it's working before we publish the white paper, before we come off Ethereum onto our own blockchain, before we have press announcements, before we have educational websites and videos that show people how to do it easily, before Switch is live, it's already working. Because, because we have made it easy for anybody in the world to mine a basically green Bitcoin, right? Something that works just like Bitcoin, but that is green. People are already proving that it works before we are helping them, okay? Before, I'm um, sorry. Okay, thank you so much, All right? It's already working. It's working right now. The community, the community has proven out that this works already by slowly mining this over time, right? And, uh, and by talking to people about it, um, people are finding out about it. And people that don't have $5,700 are saying, well, I still want to buy some green. How can I do that? And they can go to Uniswap and they can buy $200 worth of green or they can buy $500 worth of green. This is already working right now. See, we are at the exact same stage that Bitcoin was at after six or seven years of development, where the community, you, you have done this. You have mined it. You have told other people how to mine it. Uh, people, um, even, though, even though our product hasn't launched yet, because our product is going to launch in July, People have been talking about how this product is going to work for years, for years. And because there is an expectation that the product will work at some point in time in the future, 
there's already value, right? Because we are far enough along, people believe this team with, with you and me and the other people that are involved, people already believe that this is going to work. And so there's value. There's a speculative value um, applied to this project before we even have told the world about it. Now, a lot of blockchain projects work like this, where they promise to do something one day. And then years later, maybe they deliver on the promise, maybe they don't. Um, we have been talking about this for four years, but we needed to make it easy to use. Okay. And we needed to create a reward system to incentivize people to use it. So we needed two things, and those two things took time. Um, the idea was, what if we could pay people green to use their green? That was the idea. In order to do that, we had to have enough people mine green and then donate it so that we could have a big bucket of green to pay people rewards to use it. And it takes time to mine things in a fair launch product because unlike Ripple or other products, we didn't want to do a shortcut. We didn't want to do a pre-mining or a founder's tax or something like ZEC or an airdrop. We didn't want to do an ICO or investors. And so the only way to do it was exactly like Bitcoin, was to download the nodes and mine them slowly according to a distribution model. And that took years to do. And so now we have 25 billion green that are locked up in a wallet um, with a four-way multi-sig password that requires multiple people to release it. And we have that protected so that we can pay people green to use green. So when someone pays their power bill, we launch our product on July 4th, when someone uses uh, 10,000 green to pay their power bill, we will send them back a reward and we're going to publish this and all, all the data. I know this is being recorded, so I want to be really careful with what I say. But right now, our plan is to send them back 10,200 green. We're calling this reverse staking. Reverse staking. So if you stake 10,000 Ethereum, um, it's, a, it's like 9,780 Ethereum. You earn about 600 Ethereum. If you stake 10,000 green, you'll earn 10,000 green only on uh, if you use it to pay your power bill. So the first thing I had to do when I was mining Bitcoin, right? I had to pay, I had to use electricity to create Bitcoin. And then the first thing I needed to do with my Bitcoin is pay for electricity. And so the same thing with green is we're gonna use a tiny little bit of electricity to mine green. And then the first thing we want to do with it is pay off our power bill. Right. And so right now, depending on the country that you're in, it, it costs five to ten dollars worth of electricity to mine two hundred dollars worth of green. And so that's a better conversion than Bitcoin. And that's why we're doing it. Right. Um, the staking reward is very easy to maintain over time once you understand how credit card processing fees work. So in the United States, a very popular credit card is um, the Costco credit card. And you get a 3% reward back when you use your Costco credit card at Costco. Costco is the second biggest um, store in America after Walmart, right? And so when people spend $6,000 at Costco, they generate a $200 in rewards. It's simple. So as people move green around on the network and we're collecting transaction fees, we'll be able to refill the battery to pay out a reward for people to pay their power bill. And this process, along with some other strategies that we have of refilling the battery, is going to enable us to continue doing this reward um, uh, indefinitely. So we might have to wait list certain people um, in certain countries, if it becomes very popular, very fast, because we need our business plan to grow along with the users that grow. But when we launch this product uh, on July 4th, um, we will be able to give people a substantial reward 
for using green to pay their power bills. And we will make it easy for them to use green to pay their power bills because they can deposit their green on a switch debit card. And they can use that switch debit card to sign up for automatic bill pay with their power company. And we can make this process automatically. So you use green on your switch credit card, your switch credit card converts it to local fiat, your power bill is paid. The battery with 25 billion green recognizes that you use green to pay your power bill and the battery sends you back your green reward plus a little bit more. And as long as we scale our business plan in alignment with how many people want to use the product, just like Uber, Uber launched a lot of countries all at once. Their product is a driver. As long as they added drivers in relationship to how many users they added, they had they could fulfill their product. So um, we need to uh, do a lot of work and we need to scale our business plan in, uh, in alignment with how many people want to use it uh, to pay their power bills. And we can continue this process uh, forever, not for businesses and big mansions and things like that, but 90% of the world has a power bill under $200 a month USD. They spend $100 to $200 a month electricity. $100 to $200 a month is a credit card reward for spending or moving around three to $6,000. It's very achievable. This business plan is very achievable. We've been working for four years on it, and we are going to announce it to the world um, right now. So um, uh, um, uh, on July 4th, now it's not all going to be everywhere in the world on the first day. We're going to launch with the UK first, um, and then we're going to launch with uh, the North and Eastern Europe. Um, we're going to try to bring on Dubai in the United States. Uh, we're going to try to do that all this year. So we're going to try to launch it globally this year, but we're going to try to launch um, one core market on, on July 4th with an MVP, which is a minimum viable product to prove to people um, that this can work and how this can work. And so you're hearing about this before we do all of those things. So if you want to wait until we prove to the world that we can accomplish this and we can scale, that is okay. Some people like to wait and they like to participate after all the bugs have been worked out. If you like um, being early into things uh, that have a little more risk, but potentially more reward, um, that's what I like. And so that's why I'm here. I'm more interested in green because it hasn't launched yet, right? I, I signed up because I wanted to be one of the people that helped green launch into the world. So Stefan, I'm, I'm, um, I'm going to have to hand the call back to you right now because um, they, uh, we've got a, um, the legal is really important uh, to green and the other brands. Um, we want to do everything right. Um, you know, if we're launching 150 countries in one year, we need to be compliant in all of those countries. And so they're flying in a bunch of lawyers today uh, from Coinbase and um, a bunch of other places to uh, just make sure we're saying the right things, we're doing the right things, we're publishing the right things. Uh, this happens often around here. And so my, my whole day got, uh, got hijacked a little bit, um, but it's for good, good purpose. So I need to hand the call over back to you. And so you can you can finish um, any of the holes. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Jonathan. Yeah. I'm getting more excited every time when I'm listening to you. <laughs> we we well. are extremely grateful. And uh, once again, we speak soon, I'm sure you and me, Jonathan. And for you, everybody listening in to this call, I hope you got a little bit scratched the surface now on what is it really that Green is doing? What is it that Connect is providing, you know, for us? Yes, as Jonathan said, not only, not only, it sounds crazy, are we getting the, the possibility to be a part of, you know, taking power to the next step, rolling out microgrid, microgrids in solar, being part of mining these, you know, coins, these rewards from running the software and so on. And now, on top of that, then, what is so interesting, Jonathan spoke about a minimum viable product. 
I want to a little bit uh, elaborate on that because that doesn't only include green and the possibility of actually paying your power bill. Okay. It also includes switch, which is the banking application, the banking node network, decentralized banking being built up together with a green reward coin. <laughs> so if you do not understand how powerful that is, then you should, you know, get back to, you know, the person that invited you to this call because it's revolutionary. Okay. Not only decentralizing electricity and power for people, but also decentralizing the payment option, the payment method vehicle for it. That's pretty cool, guys. And if you start looking at that combination, banking and energy, what could be better? Backing up a reward with sustainable energy, clean energy mind rewards, that are faster, cheaper, more sustainable for us to use, but also bringing on at the same time the possibility of getting more back when you pay your power bill with this reward. Okay? So minimum viable product by July the 4th. Of course, we are talking also, you know, commissions for, you know, getting people on board on this platform. But take a look at the small sister, what you're going to call it. Some people call it Big Brother, Gala Token, Gala Games, okay? Run on the same kind of concept as this is, the backbone, the core code, and so on. Take a look what has happened to that. That doesn't guarantee that green will go in the same way. It doesn't guarantee that switch will go in the same way. But it gives, certainly, if you ask me, some kind of pointer where we are heading. So get back to the person that invited you to this call. Ask the questions. Because honestly, guys, I have now seen this from the side since about November, December. And by the day, looking at who joins this, what's going on, what's happening, I can tell you guys, I'm getting more and more excited on a daily basis. Don't look back. It's like Jonathan said yesterday on a call with us. So was it the day before? You know, try to, you know, to, to you know, look backwards over the shoulder and run forward. What will happen? It's not so easy, correct? Look forward where you're going. Look what you want to achieve. Everything will sort itself out, I am sure. I have seen that this, uh, pe these people behind the leadership with Jonathan Gibbs, the founder, Wright Thurston, people that have joined after Jonathan came in, the 30 days, as he said, and I am, as I said, more excited by the day. Follow the groups, Telegram, follow what your upline, the people that invited you, gives you information. And you know, go in comfortable. That's also something I want to say. Go in comfortable into any project. Don't go, not go in too hard into it. Go in and test it, but be sure to be part of it. So that's all for today from me. 